Hi, Stas here with another video brought to you by Vehico. In the last video, we looked at a relatively new type of beverage, the hard seltzer. We talked about where it came from and even how to make one at home. If you haven't seen that video already, I'll put a card up above and a link down below if you want to go check that out. In this video, we'll be picking things up once the hard seltzer has finished its primary fermentation and explore different ways you can enjoy this style of beverage. Before we go into some of the ideas of how you can enjoy a homemade hard seltzer, we need to talk about packaging. Once primary fermentation is finished and your gravity readings are stable 24 hours apart, set your fridge to about four degrees Celsius to cold crash if using a fridge and allow your hard seltzer to clarify for three to four days. If you aren't using a fridge, you can use finings such as TurboClear. Just follow the packet instructions. A common issue with hard seltzers is a sulfur or eggy aroma in the finished product. This is often caused by poor yeast health. In the previous video, we talked about making sure that our yeast, in this case, Lullaman CBC1, was treated well with nutrients, in our case, DAP and GoFirm. On sampling my hard seltzer, it was fairly neutral with a slight white wine or sake-like aroma. While I didn't feel CO2 scrubbing was absolutely necessary for me, I wanted to do it so I could make the cleanest tasting product possible. You can bubble carbon dioxide through the hard seltzer to help scrub the sulfur aromas from your beverage. To do this, transfer your hard seltzer into a keg and connect your CO2 gas set to around 5 psi to your liquid outpost. It is handy here to have push fittings to allow this unusual setup easy. Once your gas is hooked up to your liquid post, Pull the PRV on your keg and you'll hear the CO2 bubble up through your keg. Do this for 20 to 30 seconds or longer. Repeat if required. If you bottle, you could rack your hard seltzer into a clean bucket or fermenter and then bubble CO2 through that. However, your options here are much more limited. Once I had scrubbed my hard seltzer with CO2, I hooked up my keg to the kegerator and allowed the keg to carbonate over the next week or so. During this time, the hard seltzer went from almost clear to completely clear. Now, on to the fun stuff, flavoring. Depending on how your hard seltzer turns out, you can adjust your pH using citric or similar acid to accentuate the fruity flavors. Usually hard seltzers are adjusted to around a pH of 3.1 or so. Simple fruit herb botanical additions. This can be as simple or as complex as you like. You can take a wedge of your favorite citrus fruit and squeeze it into your glass and or sit the fruit inside your glass. You can mix and match as you like. If you wanna make a larger batch, you can fill a jug to share with your friends. I've prepared two versions here, a simple wedge of orange squeezed into the hard seltzer with a slice of orange to garnish and something a little more complex a strip of cucumber, some blueberries, blackberries, and strawberries. I used frozen berries here because that's just what I had. You can also take inspiration from cocktail recipes like the classic mojito. In this version, I'm taking about 10 mint leaves, roughly chopped, the juice of about three quarters of a lime, and two teaspoons of sugar, or adjust to taste. You could also experiment here with different types of sugar. Fruit and herbal teas can also make for interesting combinations. Someone has spent a long time getting those flavor combinations just right. These can be great for a starting point or somewhere to draw inspiration from. Flavor extracts can also be used if you want to keep the drink clear. Just go easy on the amounts. Hard seltzer doesn't have a lot of flavor on, on its own like beer does. It can be easily overpowered, so less is more and remember, it's easy to add more if you decide you want more flavor. You can't take it out. Make a syrup. You can make a syrup to mix your hard seltzer with. I'm quite partial to gin and tonic, so I thought I would try something which uses gin-like botanicals. I found this recipe online, links below, which I've slightly tweaked. We have one tablespoon of juniper berries, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, a teaspoon of fennel seeds, three cardamom pods, 45 mils of lime juice, which is about one lime worth of juice, half a cup or 105 grams of sugar, and half a cup or 250 milliliters of water. 
Roughly grind the spices and botanicals in a mortar and pestle. Place it in a saucepan. Add the sugar, water and lime juice. Bring that to the boil, then reduce to a simmer for five minutes. Strain into a glass jar. Let it cool or cover and refrigerate. This will keep in the fridge for about a month. Now to add this to your seltzer, add approximately 60 milliliters to a 330 ml glass with ice and top up with your hard seltzer. Garnish with a slice of lime and a sprink of rosemary, which is of course optional. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can enjoy hard seltzer. Get creative with it and have some fun. Some of you might like to keep your base hard seltzer neutral so you can play with the flavors all the time. Others might like to just flavor things right in the keg because that's the way you like it. It's up to you. I hope you enjoyed the second part of the hard seltzer video. If this sounds like something that you or that special someone might enjoy, I encourage you to have a go at brewing your own at home. Check out Beerco's Swing Hard Seltzer Kit linked in the description down below. So until next time, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing with another video brought to you by Beerco. Cheers. Thank you.